Hey guys, it's Bailey and welcome back to the channel for what's going to be a review of the Bedellium Tools Studio Series Basic 7-Piece Brush Set. This guy retails for $50, includes obviously seven brushes as well as a brush roll that I have my brushes stored in here. Comes in the box that I just held up and I got this from Octoly. I am not new to Bedellium Tools. I think I picked up my first few brushes from them. Uh, my first iMats, so what is that, like four years I went to iMats New York? Four years ago, I think it was. Whatever it was, I have I have been a longtime lover of Bedellium Tools. They're amazing quality brushes, but very very affordable. Unfortunately, you can't find them in stores. Like that was the first time I'd ever seen them in person and was able to kind of feel the brushes and see the size and the shape and get to hold them and all that. So one downside is that it is harder to find in stores. But I saw this on Octoly and wanted to give it a try because I do really really like the brushes that I've tried from them and they're very affordable. Like I said, this is fifty dollars. You get seven brushes inside. So just over seven bucks a brush and this pouch which now is a good time to show you what's inside it has a, a uh what is this? velcro <laughs> a velcro clasp here and you unroll it to find that it is this 20 kind of it holds 20 brushes it has 10 on top 10 on the bottom this folds down over top so you're not getting powder and stuff everywhere it kind of catches product if you have any left over on the brush on the ends here you have pockets if you want to store any clip things although i have a clip you can see stored here this is what i use to like pin my hair back as i'm when you'll see in tutorials that's what i use to put my hair back so you can put things like that in here and then here are the seven brushes that come inside so this whole set when you go out on the bedellium site and you look at the details of the set it says it's a mix of synthetic and natural fibers and so when it comes to cleaning they recommend using soap and water i use cinema secrets like the big blue bottle because it's so simple you don't need to rinse it's literally you dab it in the solution you brush the product off, say on a paper towel or something like that, and then you set it down, you let it dry very, very quickly, and it's good to go. Um, so that is what I used to clean these. It weathered them just fine. So even though Bedellium recommends soap and water, like the good old fashioned way, I don't have time for that. Cinema Secrets works beautifully on these as well. So now let's actually go through them. The first one is kind of a powder brush here. This is the 964 and it is the all purpose blusher. This really is a great multitasker. It's kind of a general powder blush. It's a powder blush, powder brush. It's not so big that you could kind of do your whole face, although you could, it just might take longer than if you have kind of a bigger powder brush. This I find is perfect for setting the under eyes if you have any translucent translucent powder or um, foundation that you like to set your under eye area with. It is also great for blush or maybe even contour, honestly, especially if you like to put the loose powder on underneath so you're not super worried about how precise your contour is. You can do that all over bronzer. It's really a nice size to multitask for anything. Next up is the 948. This is sort of a traditional kind of paintbrush style foundation brush. It feels like they are synthetic synthetic bristles, very uh, kind of soft and very smooth. They, You can see they do absorb quite a bit of product, but nothing that cleaning, even with Cinema Secrets, doesn't get out. Overall, I find that it does perform like a lot of other foundation brushes. I tend to not prefer this kind because I find that they leave my foundation a little streaky, especially for the kinds of foundations I prefer, which tend to be heavier coverage, thicker and consistently consistency i my words today apologies right up front apparently i can't talk but the consistency of the foundation i like to use like right now i'm wearing the new maybelline matte foundation and so this does have a tendency to get a little streaky with that the to counter that i find i just kind of pounce it on top of the skin some people might not want to go through that trouble totally get it but if you do you know if you find yourself with this kit and you're like oh how do i make this work for me that's what i find i do is i just kind of tap it on top of the skin to help avoid those brush strokes Next up is the 942 or the angle contour brush. Pretty true to the name. It it goes for your contour. I actually have used it not only for contour. In fact, I think I used it in the video in my recent drugstore haul video where I'm using the Maybelline Master Contour palette. I use it to not only apply the contour. Is it in that video? In some video, I also use it to apply blush. It's a great, it's a really nice size, nice and precise for getting in that contour, but it's not so kind of dense and narrow that you can't also use it for buffing blush out. Plus, I find that the density here really is good for packing on that powder, whether or not you prefer a stronger blush or you're just working with a less pigmented blush that you tend to need to layer to get the kind of payoff that you want. In fact, likewise, the size makes it great for highlight as well because you can kind of turn it on its side 
side like you would for contour and just go right down the tops of the cheekbones to get a really precise but still natural looking highlight. So once again, great multitasker and the size is really, makes it really versatile. On to the 785, it is a good old tapered blending brush. This is possibly, not this one in particular, but just this kind of brush in general one of my favorite multitaskers of all time. Obviously, it's great for the eyes, not only for getting in the crease to blend, also just applying a wash of color to the lids, if that's what you prefer, is a really nice, flattering, you know, champagne on the lid. This is a good go-to brush, as well as applying those matte shades in the crease. However, I also really, really like it for buffing out uh, concealer around the eyes. It's great kind of tapered tip to get a precise buff through the under eye area, as well as around the nose, any blemishes you have around your face. This is, I just love, love, love these kinds of brushes. And likewise for setting powder. If you like to use a separate kind of powder to set your under eyes versus the rest of your face, I personally prefer to use a foundation so I get a little bit more coverage in my under eyes and then a translucent powder elsewhere as I may need it. And so when I want to do that, I want a smaller brush that can get specifically in my under eye area without getting it anywhere else around the face. So this is really good for that. Up next is a pretty standard shadow brush. It is the 777. You can see it is flat, relatively dense, but also slightly fluffy. So you could use it to get a good solid pack of pigment on top of the lid. But the kind of fluffy tip here, kind of tapered on top, is also great for buffing that out in the crease. If this is the one brush you want to use to not only pack that product across the lid, but then also really really get up in that crease to make sure that you have a nice line that kind of stops where you want it to, but doesn't also end super abruptly. This is a good brush to do that with. Nearing the end here, we have the 540 brush. They call this a precise liner brush, right? Yeah, a precise liner brush, but it, it looks exactly like a lip brush to me. I gotta be really honest, folks. You can use this to line because it is, whoa, not in my hands right now. <laughs> it's really narrow. You can see here when you tilt it on the side. So you can get a nice precise line, but I tend to prefer an angled brush, which I'll talk about in just a second. This to me is very much a lip brush. So you definitely can use it for liner if this is a brush that you're used to. I find it's a little bit weird for me to handle, um, but you can use it. It's definitely a multi multitasker in that way because then you also have this tapered tip up at the top. I find it's great for doing the line around the lips, but I suppose it could also be good for creating an ultra precise cat eye, especially as you get way out here on the wing. So food for thought, but I definitely have a preference for the way I like to use this. And last, like I said before, I would be mentioning a liner brush. This is the 763 basic angled, well, they say brow, which is actually what I tend to use it for, but you could also use it for liner. It is kind of a larger liner brush. I know some people might prefer a smaller brush in terms of width, just so you have a little bit more, more control as you're going across your eyes. So in that way, it might be better for brows for some. I tend to prefer it for brows just because it's dense enough to pick up enough product to really lay it down nicely on my brow, but it's fine enough so that I can get that super crisp, precise tail that my brows just don't decide not to grow out there. So I tend to have to draw it on all the time for myself. And so this is really great for getting that. However, you can also tilt it on its side and still, you know, make quick work of your brows. If you do need to fill it in, it's not so small that you're going to have to work and work and work to create the brow hairs and fill it all in. It's, it's a pretty quick little tool to get a nice brow. So those are all the brushes that come inside. I have to say a lot of good things about this set. Basically, you have a full face with seven brushes because everything does kind of multitask, but for the fact that you might have to clean them in between uses in one face sitting, you could realistically just use these seven brushes to complete your entire face because they are so versatile. The one downside I would have to point out isn't even with all the brushes, it's just with this one, my favorite brush, the 785, which was the, what's it called? The tapered blending, but like I said, I find it's great for the eyes, around the face, whole shebang. It's lost its shape a little bit for me. I haven't been using this for longer than a week and a half, maybe two weeks max at this point. And I think it's because it's all natural hairs that it just has lost its shape. I didn't shape it after I washed it. I think I do have brush shapers. For those of you who don't know what those are, they kind of look like finger traps. They just close. You, you, it's like a brush sleeve that you put over your brush and it kind of helps shape the hairs as the brush is drying. Didn't use that when I dried this because I generally don't have to when I'm using a brush with synthetic fibers. This just might be the exception. You might need to do that with this one because I just find they're getting a little unruly awfully fast given the 
short amount of time that I've had this for. Besides that though, have not noticed the same thing with any of the other brushes that I suspect to be natural hair, like the Big Powder Brush or the Angled Contour Brush. Both of these have behaved really nicely and haven't kind of feathered out or gotten really super crazy, so that's good. But you know, as far as downsides go, I would say that's the only one that I've personally experienced. Beyond that, I think this is an amazing set, and for just over seven bucks a brush, you really can't beat that for a phenomenal tool. Like I said, the Bedelium tools or brushes that I have had, I've had now for going on five years because I first got them at IMATS four years ago, five years ago. Um, so I do think they are tools that are gonna stand the test of time. Plus you get this really nice brush belt. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope this review was useful. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video. Bye.